Okay, let me just start off by asking at least where are you from? Australia. Okay, Jean, what about you? Where are you from? I'm from Taiwan. Okay, Say, what about you? Where are you from? Korea. Okay, Hisham, where do you think I'm from? Israel. Okay, where do you think I was born? Israel. Yeah, Mr. Schmidt, what about you? Where do you think I'm from? I Israel. Do yeah. you know where I was born? I assume you're born in a hospital in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> So I was Israeli and I've lived there for most of my life, but ever since last fall break, I've been Romanian, French, Maltese, and apparently I've lived in Hong Kong my entire life. Last fall break, me and my family traveled to Japan. I uh, we went to a theme park, a ninja theme park, did an obstacle course, and when we finished and I was in line, I got a message from my cousin. I opened it and I saw that he texted me that they had six consecutive missile alarms and have been in the safe room for half an hour. I didn't pay much attention to it, honestly, because it was nothing irregular for us. We were used to it. Uh, but a few hours later, when I checked my phone, it was filled with posts about murdered civilians and kidnapped girls and elderly shot at a bus stop, and I was furious. And my cousin texted me the exact words, not in Hebrew, in English. It will be over soon. But six months have passed, 1,500 murdered, 15,000 injured, and 260 taken hostage. I carry my deep trauma with me every day, but it's as if in my heart, it's in my phone, which is staying with the words murdered, kidnapped, and raped. For the last six months, I've stayed traumatized with every so-and-so was murdered message I received, the awakening of subconscious fear. But I'm not the only one experiencing this trauma. All Jews worldwide are experiencing some trauma from the attack. And this trauma adds to our already existing trauma. It's our intergenerational trauma passed to us from our parents from their parents. It's trauma caused by thousands of years of discrimination and hate. Dr. Rachel Yehuda covered this topic in her research, which proved that Holocaust survivors and their descendants had a change in the DNA, which other groups who had experienced such trauma did not. This trauma impacts many Jewish people subconsciously. Some invest in jewelry in case they have to flee with something little. Some always carry food on them. And some are constantly worried about which neighbor might hide them and which would not. It's a legitimate thing. Rabbi Dr. Dirza Firestone, a respectable psychotherapist and author, wrote about that and wrote how Jewish past trauma can lead to hypervigilance, fatalism, and a sense of radical unsafety in the world. This trauma from the past will forever be embedded into Jewish DNA as a reminder of who we are and where we came from. And the trauma will now become worse due to October 7. As Professor Yair Bachaim, a psychology expert, predicted that 30,000 new cases of PTSD will occur among Israelis due to the war massacre. October 7th will, if it had not already, leave a scar on Jewish people's DNA for generations to come. I am aware that nothing can be done about this trauma, but I at least hope to ease it up. Therefore, I decided to commemorate the lives of those murdered at the Supernova Festival on October 7th. Commemorations are a great part of Judaism, and I thought that commemorating the lives and memories of those who were murdered would be a great thing to do. Therefore, I will plant a tree around the school area and build a small monument commemorating the lives of those murdered at that music festival. People can come, pay tribute, bring flowers, and raise awareness. But even now, last weekend, Iran attacked Israel, so I'm fully aware that I cannot stop anti-Semitism or the intergenerational trauma, but I at least hope to raise awareness and, and keep the memory living. Thank you. Thank you.